So we're thinking about a circle with two intersecting chords in it. And what we did in the last video is we connected their endpoints to make a couple of triangles. And we managed to prove that those two triangles are similar to each other. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to start from that point and move forward to see if we can come up with some equation that relates the four internal sides of those two triangles. All right, so here was our figure. And we managed to prove here, as I say, that this triangle on the left is similar to this triangle on the right. Now, because we know that, we can say that there is a proportion between the uh, corresponding pairs of sides in these two triangles. So let me ask you this question. Let me highlight this side here in yellow. Now, in the other triangle, which side is the side that corresponds to this yellow side? <clears throat> As a little bit, what I'm basically asking is if I took the triangle and I got some tracing paper and I traced out, I traced out this triangle on it and I did whatever transformation it would take to get it over to the other side of the vertex, would this be a rotation or would it be a reflection that would, that would make the correspondence line up? as a similarity. And the answer is, if I did this, it would be, if I do a, a reflection, you can see how the third side of this triangle is parallel to this. So it would just take a simple dilation to make these two triangles line up. But on the other hand, if I took this triangle and tried to rotate it, then there's no such a uh, parallel structure between the two sides of the triangle. Another way you could see that if you didn't have tracing paper, but did just look at the diagram is you could see that this yellow side, the two endpoints are the single arc angle and the double arc angle. So the corresponding side has to be the same side between the single arc angle and the double arc angle in the other triangle. So there are my two yellow sides. And the other side that I want to talk about is I want to talk about this side of the triangle. So what's the corresponding side to this in this triangle? Well, I don't even want to give you a gold star. You can give yourself a silver star if you identified it as that side right there. All right. So now that we've got those sides highlighted like that, let's write a proportional statement that we can use to follow up with our statement of, oh my goodness, what did I do there? Those two triangles aren't congruent, they are similar. All right, so what is the proportion we can set up between these two triangles? Well, there are a couple different ways you can write it. It doesn't really matter. But the idea is, let me say that the yellow side is to the pink side in this triangle. So that's DE is to AE in the same proportion that the yellow side is to the pink side in this triangle. So EC is to EB. And for my reason for this, I am going to write the corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. I excel in a lot of other places, just say that this is the definition of similarity, but yeah, I'm not really sure that's the definition of similarity at all. Uh, at any rate, it's you just need to have a reason for it. Either one of those, somebody's going to understand what you mean. All right. And so the last step that we're going to do, just for grins, is we're going to cross multiply here so that we can write this as a product of two numbers instead of a quotient of two numbers. And so if I do that, here I've got AE times EC is equal to DE times EB. And that's just cross multiplying. or you can say algebra or something like that. It's just some logical reason why the previous steps plus everything that we know is leading us to this fact right here. 
All right. And so what I want to do is I want to take this proof and I want to take out these sides and all of the other supplementary stuff. And I just want to write what we just identified here. And we'll call this the chord theorem. That if AC and BD are two chords intersecting at E in a circle, then all we know, that's all we need to know in order to say that AE times EC is equal to BE times ED. And this isn't the same highlighting that I used in the in the last diagram, but let's just be clear that AE and EC we're multiplying the length of the two sections of that chord, and that's got to be equal to BE times ED, which is the length of the two sections that this chord gets split into. So it's a pretty easy thing to kind of look at a problem and see how you can identify um, and, and set up an equation if you know uh, that you've got two chords intersecting and you know the lengths of several parts of it and want to find a missing part. All right, so that's the chord theorem. It's a really surprising thing. Um, it surprises me a little bit, just that if you draw two chords and connect their endpoints, you've got two triangles that are similar to each other. I don't know if that surprised you, but it surprises me still whenever I look at it. Um, not something that I expect. It's one of those hidden secrets of circles that shows up. Uh, in the next batch of videos, we're going to look at more connections uh, between the lengths of line segments and, and uh, how they work with circles.